it's Ina from Books and Boyfriends and welcome to our March reading wrap up. I'm super super excited to share with you all the books that I was able to read in March and though this is a little bit late I hope you still enjoy as I share the books that I did enjoy uh, reading this month and of course my favorite part as always is the reading statistics. So without further ado let's get started. January I was able to read 15 books, February 18 books and I'm super super happy that for this month I was able to read 18 books again so we're very much on track in terms of like the reading goal for the year which is 104 books um, which is my yearly reading goal since like 2019 I think and then for the pages read so far this is the month with the most su successful page count at 6,298 pages now it's a format I am much mainly an audiobook currently and it still is true to this day nine audiobooks for march with six ebooks and three physical books which i think is an achievement because i've been you know touching these physical books on the shelves even though it's a small number um it's still an achievement for me <laughs> now in terms of the book length there's nothing much has changed um i read one book below 250 pages and then my standard is um, 251 to 350 pages usually 300 to 350 and there I read nine books and then um, for 351 to 450 pages I was able to read six books and then two books from 451 to 550 pages and as always I haven't read any book longer than 551 pages it's something I want to change in the near future I hope I um, brave enough I get brave enough to read longer books especially that I'm on track on my reading goals anyway so yeah let's see next in terms of the genres read I still lean towards my comfort genres I read eight contemporary romances in March and seven mystery thrillers this month but I did try out three different genres one women's fiction one historical fiction and one memoir or biography in terms of the audiences i am very very surprised about this but i understand why this is happening i have 15 books for adult audiences and three books for young adult audiences i don't really read much ya anymore because of course we're no longer young adults but sometimes you know I, I did find a favorite YA read recently and I'll talk about it later. But now, in terms of books based on the year published, I lean toward recent releases. Four books from 2024, six books from 2023, five books that were published from 2018 to 2022, no books from 2012 to 2017 and then three books that were published earlier than 2011 so yeah but in those books out of those books i was able to read two books from a filipino author which is quite nice and something that i need to work on i need to read more filipino author books so please let me know your recommendations and comment them down below so but for spice rating as a romance reader i do track this one i have one book with level one spice in my opinion four books in level two spice two books in level three spice and then three books with vanilla or not spicy at all and then eight books that are not appropriate or not included in this type of rating so there and then with authors, I do track my familiarity with them um, because I lean towards reading books from authors I haven't read before and that remains true. Um, we have here 12 books from authors that are new to me, um, 4 books from authors I've read once before, and I read 2 books from authors that I have read multiple times already. In terms of ethnicity, I did read 4 books by Asian authors and 2 books by black authors this month which i am happy to celebrate and then 12 books from white authors now in series versus standalones i don't know why i do check this but um, it's still nice to track but yeah i lean towards standalones because i don't usually follow through with the reading series so i did have 12 books from standalone uh, books and then six books that are from a series now from copy sources i i am very 
much utilizing my library card. Uh, 12 books were borrowed from the B, 3 books were ARCs, uh, 2 books were gifted to me, and then one of those reads I bought myself. And then lastly, we go to the star ratings. On average, uh, I mean, looking at this graph, uh, March was a fairly good reading month. There was one book that I, I, I rated two stars, and then three books I rated three stars, but uh, it's still a win. Seven books with four stars and seven books with five stars. And now it's time to talk to you about the books. So I did read 18 books and I don't know if I still remember what they are about, but I'll try and do as much as I can. But of course, you can add me on Goodreads to see some of like my immediate thoughts. And I'll also be linking down some of the videos I put out earlier this month that talk about these books. Okay, so the first read of the month was an ARC. It is for Mortgage of Convenience by Danny McLean. This was an ARC sent to me on NetGalley. And I actually am surprised um, because I entered with no expectations. And it turned out that I really, really like this book. This is a contemporary romance book about um, a brother's best friend trope forced proximity trope because our main character who is a ghostwriter moves back to her hometown and something happened that she ended up like taking out a mortgage on a house with her brother's best friend they had sports before never really acted on it but this time with forced proximity and lots of heart-to-heart -heart talks they something came up like they couldn't really resist like the sparks of the tension anymore and romance ensues. I was surprised that um, I saw some negative reviews about it because I really, really enjoyed reading this one. It's quite a uh, chunky contemporary romance. It was, um, and I think it was because it didn't only focus on the romance, it also focused on the personal development of both of the characters, which I liked. I also like the dynamic. Um, it's very, very steamy, which I also enjoy in my reads. So yeah, I, I know I give this one high star. So I'm not going to talk about the star ratings. I'll just probably put it here somewhere because I can't remember right now. But yeah, the next book I read was Meet Me at the Cupcake Cafe by Jenny Colgan. This is an arc I was sent years back. Um, of like a re-edition, a newer edition of this book. And I really, really liked it. It's a cozy read about a woman who left her former job and um, opened up a cupcake cafe. Aside from like the story of the cupcake cafe owner, we also encounter the story of the people around the small town and develop relationships with them. And aside from the cute story, there was also um, a lot of um, serious discussions about life, about taking chances, about going for your passion and your dream. And then there are a lot of recipes also squeezed, scattered um, throughout the book and at the end of the book, um, which is what you would usually expect on like cozy um, women's fiction reads. And then I read another arc, which is Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne. This is another contemporary romance read that I really did enjoy um, because it's about a woman who was a letterer. She was a famous letterer. Um, she does calligraphy for like um, invitations programs and she did a wedding program for this couple and she there was a hidden message. I think it was mistake, the word mistake um, in it and the wedding did not actually push through and the groom was able to find that hidden word. So he confronts her about it and asks like what did she see and um, who was trying to understand what went wrong and then they formed a friendship and then suddenly this book became a mystery there was a conspiracy about it the FBI was involved it was quite intense and action-packed and it kind of steered away from the contemporary romance I was expecting which is why I was caught like in between different ratings for the book because in one point I really did enjoy the contemporary romance but then the story brought me to a place that i wasn't expecting and i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing but yeah so there was a cons some conspiracy theories like with this protection programs and all that so that was dramatic and action-packed which i like but i don't know seeing its cover and like the blurb about it i wasn't expecting all of that so that was quite a surprise over there 
The next uh, two books are the two Filipino books that I read. It's part of the Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mysteries and I'm very don't know if I'm very very biased about it but I really really enjoyed reading it. So these two are Homicide and Halo Halo and Blackmail and, Bib and Bibinka by Mia P. Manansala. These are books uh, in the cozy mystery genre. And I love it. Of course, it reflects Filipino culture. There's a lot of Filipino food references um, and family and all that. There's also this, you know, investigative part in reading this book, which I really, really liked. And I guess because I have been following through the journey of these characters, I have been really, really rooting for them. And there's always a murder. There's always an investigation. And then there are these quirky characters. Um, there's a cute dog. And... You just follow through with the story. I think this is a type of a series that you really need to go through them in order because you'll miss out on some references. Though it touches on it, it's still different if you get to experience them yourself. So if you're interested in reading these books, you should, fir you should first start with its initial book, which is um, Arsenic and Adobo. So there. And then the next book I read was The Surprise from this month. I think this was just like a random request because I saw this book somewhere. And it's, um, I hope this doesn't find you by An Li Yang. This is a young adult contemporary romance that is like quickly becoming like a favorite of mine. And it's something that I've been recommending to people asking me about like a recent read that i really really loved i loved this one i really imagine this like turning into a netflix movie for teens because um it's an academic rivals to lovers trope with like an it's always been you trope there's cute banter and the author really did a good job of writing this book so basically this is about um i remember the guy's name julius i'm not sure if I can't remember the name of the female lead, but she is like a goody two shoes. She is like one of the best students and she has this reputation of being a very nice girl. But sometimes her patience is tested. She also gets irritated too. She gets frustrated and things happen to her. And because of like what people are expecting of her, she doesn't really have someone to unload those emotions to. So she writes these emails and she just saves them in her drafts. No intent at all of sending it to other people. But something happened and these emails get sent to the entire student body, not just to the intended recipients. And because of that, um, people saw her differently, like in her reputation era. And one of the people who, were, who was really hurt with those emails is her academic rival again Julius he just wanted to be her friend really but she always sees things like in like in the rival um shade <laughs> so she never really thought about how much they are involved in each other's lives and how this tension or, or this thinking about him and getting frustrated about him might actually be a crush so when this happened they got punished by the school administrator or the principal and they have to spend more time together so this leads to them getting to know each other better like clearing out those perceptions they have on each other and of course romance ensues and i'm really really happy about that romance and aside from that they also learn so many things about growing up about relating to other people about family about friendship and all of that and there all of these things all of these topics were written so beautifully so engaging as well so it really caught my attention and kept me engaged rooting for these characters from beginning to end and that that's why i gave this one five stars and i'm sure of that so there Next book I have is another interesting read. This is A Love Song for Ricky Wild by Tia Williams. This uh, is another book I entered blindly, so I was expecting a contemporary romance based on the cover and on like the title. But it ended up being a magical realism book that also touches in romance anyway. Um, basically, we have our main character in 2023, if not 2024, um, and she meets this guy. And we kind of find out that he is from the past. 
And so we get a dual POV of her in present time and him in like the 1920s Harlem. But yeah, this is like a love song for New York as well. It's represented all throughout the story and then the love story between these two characters. It's also another engaging read. The author really did a great job of like telling this story and I enjoyed getting to know the characters i enjoyed as well the magical realism part and i was like feeling nervous as they were feeling nervous and i was really rooting for their happy ending and yeah though it's bittersweet i did like um, what i got to the end so it's an interesting thing i kind of think that um i'm not like really anti-magical realism after all i thought i would be put off by it but this author did a good job doing this one so i really did enjoy reading this the next read I have is The Summer We Forgot. This is another young adult read. This time, finally, a mystery thriller. And this one is by Caroline George. I remember winning this one um, from a publisher giveaway years back. And I just only got to reading it um, recently. Like, in the physical copy, partner with reading the audio. And I was really engaged as well. This is your typical... A group of teenagers um, and a crime and then them dealing with the consequences of the crime so here um, all of them who were involved in the situation of a missing camp counselor forgot what really happened that summer something was done to them that made them forget it and um, this story involves them trying to remember because one of their friends who was in that camp with them went missing and is also considered a suspect number one in this murder so they're trying to figure out the truth and they're trying to protect themselves as well um, because they're also very nervous upon forgetting everything that they might be directly involved with that crime so it's all about that it's very um, mysterious and i was i was actually very engaged trying to find out what really happened to them why they why they did it um what's the truth behind it and as well as the what is the role of their parents the freaky like kind of suspicious adults that were surrounding them in this like summer camp place so there <laughs> next i have my biography entry in this month's reading which is the woman in me by britney spears it was interesting to see like her life in her point of view and yeah it was a quick read the writing is like frankly very basic so um it something that would just pass through uh i'm not sure if i like the voice um and like the storytelling type it was very direct so yeah it was okay overall the next book is something i really did enjoy i listened to the audiobook of love theoretically by ali hazelwood so i forgot about love on the brain so from the love hypothesis i did jump into this love theoretically book and i think i kind of like it more than the love hypothesis i don't know i was really engaged with the characters i liked how um we got to know each like the male lead and the female lead i love how their characters were created and how their characters interacted i also love like the stem represent representation here and how it talked about like female and male um opportunities and academia and like also the theories the, the theoretical and experimental aspects of academia as well i enjoyed the banter between the two characters and how their their relationship started like from i'm not sure if it's technically enemies to lovers but that's the vibe i got from it so yeah i really really liked it because it's an ali hazelwood book and there's something that um I can be sure of when I pick up on Ali Hazelwood is that that I will be engaged with the writing style, with all that pop culture references, and yeah, just the way she writes. There's something about it that I really, really like. So I know her books will hit well if I pick them up. So yeah, it's probably time for me to get Love on the Brain, even though I know a lot of people like did it really um, love that compared to the Love Hypothesis. I'm gonna give it a try. So yeah okay next we have another contemporary romance it's the right move by liz tom fordy tom ford i'm not sure i remember reading the first book of this series and when i saw it was on my libby um i got the copy of the audiobook and listened to it so i 
I picked it up not knowing who would be featured in this book so along the way while I was listening I got reminded on what the first book was about and what the second book was about so so this book features a different athlete from the first book but it's the other flight attendant friend of our main character in the first book so I think he is a basketball player and he is the brother of our main character so it's also another um this one is like a best friend's brother contemporary romance read she is dealing with a breakup and she doesn't have a place to stay so her best friend asks her brother if she can be allowed to stay there in his condo unit since he was alone and since he travels a lot anyway for like out of the out of town games so he doesn't really like that because he's very private because of his popularity he really values his space and he has a hard time trusting people so she has like a very loud personality and it's very they're very much different from each other and this forced proximity like allowed them to get to know each other better and also this opportunity allowed our main lead ryan is it ryan is it shay i don't know ryan shay i think and then he his like team management because he is the new captain of the team was like looking for someone who's well-rounded and since he's single it's really hard to communicate that that his like a uh, good family guy so they kind of have so he had the idea of fake dating her as well to show a different what that is a different kind of person so yeah it's really really nice i just remember liking it so much i breezed through the audiobook even though it was long and aside from like their budding relationship this book also talks about like fertility concerns uh, money concerns and especially with communication and trust between our main main lead characters i love them i think i love their story more I don't know I, there's just something about it i can't just remember their names but i remember everything that happened and i remember loving so many lines in this book i think that even though i listened to the audiobook of this i want to get a physical copy and reread it because there were so many things that i liked and i couldn't really highlight an audiobook and i want to annotate that copy and i want to take note of all of the lines that i love but yeah yeah okay i really love that one um the next read i chose was the getaway list by emma lord this is a young adult book about two best friends um they had to grow apart because the guy had to move to new york she had to stay in her town and they always had this like idea of having a getaway list that they would travel and explore the world um, when they get older and she our main character recently graduated and she thinks it's the perfect opportunity for her to get away and visit her friend in new york so she had like a disagreement with her mother about it because her mother had her own bad new york experience but she did still push through and my lord i think i have known to like create love um stories that she dedicates to her love of new york and it's clearly shown in this book so it's like you also go on an adventure with the two main characters and you travel new york as well alongside them but she also discovers that though she feels so much at home in new york her best friend isn't feeling the same way he hasn't been telling her about a lot of things a lot of trials he is encountering on his own so yeah it really looks at their friendship and the possibility of something more and as well as what they see in their future is what's waiting for them would she be staying in new york would she going back would she be going to another state what would she do with her life basically so yeah it's a good like coming of age story a best friends to lovers to something question mark question mark story and also it's found family they read they have this like it's like a group of misfits that get together and they form a bond a strong friendship and i really did enjoy um not just the dynamic between the two between the two main characters but their entire friendship group is really interesting and really fun and yeah you just can't help but root for them their dynamic was really really nice 
The next book is um, Sprinkle with Murder by Jen McKinley. It's uh, the first book I chose for my cozy mystery series try the first book thingy. <laughs> um, this one I gave three stars I remember. I did quite like it. Um, and then the other book I tried was Janet Ivanovich. Um, just her book called One for the Money for, for the Stephanie Plum series. I remember not liking it as much as I was expecting. But I think I did have too much high of expectations. That's why I was a little disappointed with um, the writing style. I think it didn't age well. Um, the humor isn't my type. So I have no plans of continuing on in the series the first one i might continue on and then the last book for that video that i did was the diva runs out of time that book is another so so cozy mystery read um the first one and the third one both had like recipes on it and were food related so they were more interesting to me but yeah, I'm not sure if I would be able to continue on with any of these books or if I should find another cozy mystery that will I will feel attached to similar to how attached I became with like the Tita Rosie kitchen mystery. So there. Aside from those cozy mysteries, I discovered a historical fiction book that I really, really like. It's called The Wedding Veil by Christy Woodson Harvey. Um, it was... In the same package I received from a PR group, it came in with the summer we forgot years back. So, so the wedding veil is like an ode to the Biltmore estate and um, it spans the story of multiple generations about a wedding veil, about each woman's love stories, whether they decided to pursue their love, they decided to pursue their self, their love for their families. It's for different women and they all involve a wedding veil and it's mainly like set on the Biltmore estate which my parents have been to and they really loved that place they talk they can tell so many stories about that place they fell in love with it I might get to visit that in the future but like just from their stories um, when I found out that this book was about the Biltmore estate I was super super excited about it and it was nice seeing the references that my parents have told me about the place in the book and it got me more engaged about it i also enjoyed the different voices in different generations about how these four women went through their lives how they each defined love for themselves and how their love like has influence the next generations involving them and the this wedding veil as well she, how this we wedding veil influenced their views on marriage and on choosing love whether it's for themselves or for their partners or for their families so there i really really love that one i remember breezing through it and then the next book i have is the neighbor favor i also really like this one this is a contemporary romance book um i just randomly bought this copy on book outlet and then i sold it and then i saw gabby reads do a video where she just randomly mentions this book and loving it so much so with that i decided to borrow the audiobook for it just to see if like it matches my interest and oh my gosh it's really really nice it's a really good contemporary romance because it involves an author and a person in the publishing world who was also very much inspired by this book created by this author so the book wasn't famous at all it's it was liked by a certain niche of people i think it's a children's fantasy or maybe a young adult fantasy book that inspired this person to possibly work as like a children's book editor and then she discovered her favorite author opened a website so she just randomly emailed him and they become like email friends but he is hiding under a certain pen name because of family problems um, and when they were supposed to meet he kind of chickened out because he's scared of getting you know his name out there and um telling the 
because he was telling lies somewhere sprinkled in the truths he was uh, telling and he was scared that it might backfire if they actually meet in person so that kind of ended there but then you know serendipity happens and they have a chance meeting with each other and he finds out that she is the girl he was emailing who he hurt because he ghosted her so he has this dilemma of telling the truth or like trying to start a new relationship with her all the while hiding who he really was but this book that she really really like is like getting like a reboot an adaptation like a, a republishing um and like it's anticipating a sequel so yeah those things kind of mess up their dynamic their budding romance and their budding friendship and yeah the tension like um the development of their relationship was really really exciting i was engaged throughout i really liked it i just like reading about authors so much and this author did a good job in writing the romance for these two characters so there Lastly, I had read another cozy mystery, this time by Jesse Q. Sotanto, and this is Vera Wong's unsolicited, unsolicited Advice for Murderers. So this one is a cozy mystery about Vera Wong who owns a tea shop in Chinatown. There's a death that happened near her shop. So she was like an amateur detective getting excited that something it's finally happening she won't, she doesn't trust the police so she wants to do things herself and she's like a cute grandma who's trying to stay um in with the trends so she uses these words like like millennials and gen z uses and I don't know she's just so adorable i listened to it on audiobook and the narrator did a good job um expressing the kind of person vera wong is and then aside from like falling into my our an amusement with vera wong the character you also will get to find out uh, and investigate like what really happened was the person really um killed was there a murder or was it something that was self-inflicted um and it we follow vera wong as she investigates like different suspects um people who were involved in that incident involved in the life of the man who passed away so it's just a perfect cozy mystery the characters were well written you really get to know their backstories and you really really like will form an attachment to vera it's a very heartwarming read i enjoyed that one and i think like i just enjoy jessica sutanto's writing style and yeah she delivers really nice fresh mystery so yeah those were all the books that i was able to read in march and all in all it was a fun time it was an interesting time i did see myself kind of leaning towards a reading slump because of those cozy mysteries like in the series weren't like my cup of tea my taste and it was bothering me because i wasn't dnfing i was pushing through reading them and maybe i should learn how to dnf books so that i find myself not falling into like the rabbit hole of a reading slump again but yeah those were all the 18 books for march so far in april i'm doing a slow start i'm hoping it picks up um but yeah tell me about your best books in march how's your april reading so far leave anything in the comments really i'm excited to hear about your reading journey but yeah thank you so much for watching especially if you're still here till the end and yeah we always be in the mood for reading thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one bye